Hey guys, I had a lot of requests for today's video, which are, who are the fighters in Van Damme's Bloodsport? Now, I did similar videos in the past on Lionheart as well as The Quest, and I'll link them in the description below, so make sure you check those out. But the fighters in Bloodsport video by far has been the most difficult video to make, strictly from a research perspective. Some of these guys got barely any screen time. They're a real mystery, and when you look in the end credits, they don't even have character names, so they just pile them all under the heading of fighters. Now, when you go on the IMDb or the Hong Kong movie database, a lot of these actors don't even have a picture next to them, and sometimes Bloodsport was the only film they were in. So, as a result, some of these guys are going to end up being cold case files. Overall, I was able to find a lot of info on some of the guys and next to nothing on others. I hit a lot of dead ends, but I figured... I did not come this far to stop now. I ended up playing Detective Viking Samurai, and I'm pretty happy overall with what I found. Speaking of fightings, the internet is chock full of misinformation. Now, I don't know if it's purposeful like CNN, but I'll give you my commentary and let you know what I found after I filtered out all the nonsense. Uh, take this, for example. Where it says, This photo is taken on the set of Bloodsport. It's an American martial arts film directed by Newt Arnold. The actor Jean-Claude Van Damme is seen here wearing blue pants on the set. Wrong guy. And whoever wrote that must have got the blue pants confused with Van Damme and Devil Impact. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, this kind of topic, or at least if you appreciate the kind of work and research that I had to go into making this video, please smash the like button and help support the channel. So the way I'm going to break this down is in the order that the fighters in the Kumite got eliminated. The first fight was between Sun Lang and Swan Parides. Sun Lang ended up getting eliminated. He was played by Lam Shun Ching. At least that's one version of his name. He's also gone by Lin Sheng Chang as well as Lin Sung Chang. That's another reason why the research on this video took so long, by the way. Some of these guys have a dozen aliases. I mean, just pick a name, man. In the case of Lam Chun Ching, he's not even listed within the end credits for Bloodsport, which is odd because he's one of the fighters in the film whose character actually has a name. That's interesting. But anyway, he's been in quite a few films. Starting in 1980 with the Shaw Brothers Pictures film The Informer, he continued to appear in more Shaw Brothers Pictures since then, including The Emperor and His Brother, Mob Fix Patrol, and Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Lam was most productive between 1989 and 1992 when he was seen in Burning Ambition, Gangland Odyssey, and Escape from Brothel, where he played the man with the yacht. He retired in 1996 after starring in Young and Dangerous 2 and Street Angels. I couldn't really find anything more on him. For example, there's been no interviews or even an extensive bio, so I'm not sure what he's been up to since his days of acting. But either way, at least he made Parides played by Michel Kesey and Bloodsport look good. Plus he got a severance package to boot. So the second fight was Ray Jackson against Tight Pants Man, or as Jackson likes to call him, Asshole. This guy kind of reminds me of Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse, though I'm pretty sure Swayze as Dalton would have put up a much better fight. He's going to be our first cold case file. Process of elimination, going by his name, he's got to be one of the following guys. Max Klesekity, Colin Buckner, Paul Treadwell, Paul Finley, or Mark Chirac. Let me know in the comments section if you know who this poor man's Dalton guy is. The third fight was Chung Lee vs. Budiman Prang. It should be no surprise that Budiman lost this one. He's played by Samson Lee. There's really nothing on this guy. We know his name, which is more than we can say for some of the fighters, like that guy Jackson smashed in the prior fight. So Samson Lee's got one of the more impressive physiques in the Kumite. I bet you this guy was inspired by Bruce Lee, but then again, who wasn't? He probably would have ended up doing much better in the competition had he not had to face off against Bolo right out of the gate. What do you think, Bolo? You never know. We really won't. Comment below if you know anything more about Samson Lee. Alright, so the fourth fight in the film, we finally have Van Damme as Frank Dukes. Of course, he gets the ever so satisfying win over Sadiq Hassan. Now I show you some trick or two. The man he had some prior beef with earlier in the film. Hassan is played by Bernard Mariano. Bernard was born in Hong Kong. He's of Filipino descent, but was picked for the role of Sadiq Hassan in Bloodsport after being spotted working out in the gym in Wan Chai. He said, People came to this gym looking for someone with Middle Eastern looks. At the time, he needed the money to pay for his university fees. Mariana graduated with a degree in English Literature and History at the University of Hong Kong and works as an English teacher. Bloodsport is the only film he's in. Acting was just not something he decided to pursue. He actually ended up getting injured during the shoot for Bloodsport and received seven stitches. The blood in the movie in the scene with Van Damme is actually his own. After seemingly losing the match and then getting up to have another go with Van Damme, he said, my hand was resting on his shoulder and at that moment he was already moving back and caught me on the jaw and split my lip. He said, a lot of the bit part actors got injured. Not a lot of them were professional fighters and Van Damme was just too fast for us. Looking at Bernard's kick in the film, you could tell he really didn't have any skills. How'd he do with that kick? He credited you. It took him months and months and months and months and months and months 
and he finally is starting to really get it in. Though Bernard Mariano says diehard Bloodsport fans still recognize him on the street, and that although his role in the film was small, he's happy for the 15 minutes of fame it gave him. Mariano still continues to work out, sporting an impressive physique in his 50s, and also performs magic shows for children. You guys can actually book him if you want. He's got his own website, BernardoMagicShow.com, and on the About Bernardo page, it says he's a member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians, International Magician Society, and Magicians Association of Hong Kong. That's almost cooler than the Black Dragon Society in the movie. Alright, so now we start the montage for day one fights. Chun Wing Sum in dark grey kung fu attire versus neon blue pajama pants guy. Although those neon blue pants with the yellow sash were likely stylish in the 80s, they sure didn't help the guy wearing them in the kumite. Is it just me or did the physics seem off when he gets hit from that jump kick? That always stuck out to me even as a kid. But anyway, he's the guy I mentioned at the beginning of the video about the misinformation out there from that website listing him as Jean-Claude Van Damme. Here's a picture of them together, so if that website was true, we'd have a real problem. Same matter can occupy some space. So this guy is Atelio Real. He hasn't done much film work. In fact, aside from Bloodsport in 1988, he's just done a handful of projects between 2005 and 2013. He's actually got a pretty legit website though. He's a mental coach and also a kung fu master. His words, not mine. It's listed on his Instagram. Here's some footage of him doing a sticky hands exercise with a young student. As far as the mental coaching goes, here's an excerpt from his website. The basic idea of letting people go from the I through the you to the we through exercises, experiences, and insights is a path to this mental coaching. Thought energy, emotional energy, and energy of the body are felt, promoted, and used. In case anyone's wondering, he does not sell those blue pants on his website, by the way. Next fight is monkey style kung fu fighter Ricardo Mora against this guy who should probably bleach his karate gi next time he washes it. So the off-white karate gi guy is played by Wayne Archer. He's from the United Kingdom and prior to moving to Hong Kong, he worked in the coal mine and would later take on the nickname of the Kung Fu Coal Miner. He first became interested in Hong Kong movies after seeing Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury, which began his love of martial arts. Before moving to Hong Kong, he had actually went on holiday there twice. The first time was when he met Jackie Chan while Jackie Chan was shooting Dragon Lord. Wayne said he got to spend two weeks on the set every day, which was a dream come true since he was such a big fan of Jackie Chan, who was very excited that Westerners traveled to Hong Kong solely to meet him back then. I'm sure it's just annoying nowadays. But Wayne Archer says he never really had any illusions about being famous and only did movies for the fun and making money doing something you enjoy cannot be a bad thing. He's got 22 credits to his name on IMDb and has worked between 1985 and 1992. It's hard to say what he's really doing these days. There was an interview with him in 2010 on the Golden Ninja Warrior Chronicles blog, but it really only asked him about filming those movies back then in the days in Hong Kong. One of the questions did bring up Bloodsport though. Wayne Archer said he worked on that movie for seven days, only shooting his short fight scene on one day, with the rest of the time just sitting in the crowd scenes. And he says, for the record, Van Damme was a bit of an arrogant ass, despite never being known to anyone there, and I think that showed more in later years. There are other people that spoke much more favorable of Van Damme, but that's what Wayne Archer said, and he wasn't even specifically asked about Jean-Claude Van Damme during that interview, so take that for what it is. Let's hear what Van Damme's got to say about that. <laughs> Okay, so the next fight was Chuan It Mung versus Eagle Tattoo Man. Eagle Tattoo Man was played by Hung Chi Sing. Like many of the people in this video, he has various aliases, alternate versions of names. He has primarily played bit parts with generic titles like Fighter, Thug, Bank Robber, etc. from 1987 to 2000, but aside from that, I just can't really find anything else on him. Try. Up next we have Mutai Sensation Paco, who we'll talk about quite a bit later on, versus Backflip Guy in Grey Gi with Red Sash. Boy, that's a mouthful. Almost as big of a mouthful as these knees that Paco feeds him in the fight. So that guy's name is Steve Daw. There's not a whole lot on this guy, but he's only starred in a few movies in the 1980s. He definitely likes his back handspring move though, which you can see him perform here in Mission Thunderbolt. That's a good move. <laughs> You're not checked, that's a good move! He also has a mustache, which would have probably been good to keep in Bloodsport so as to soak up some of that blood after Paco broke his nose. This is funny, by the way. On one of those net worth websites, they have him down for $10 million, which I highly doubt, but you never know. I'm sure he made at least a thousand of it on Bloodsport, and even less on those lesser films. The next fight is the guy Jackson tosses off the mat. We'll just refer to him as Jazzy Jeff, since Ray Jackson gave him the Uncle Phil treatment. <laughs> The Toss Like a Ragdoll guy is played by Tsai Ken Hung, and it's only fitting he got thrown off the map by Jackson. I don't like how he's looking at Jackson right here, for example. Overall, I can't find much on him, though there's a guy with his name on Facebook that would be the right age who's from Hong Kong. This pick in 2013, he's sporting the same hairstyle. What do you guys think? Is it him? If it is, he's worked at the South China Morning Post and studied at the Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. He's even less active on Facebook than I am though and hasn't posted since 2013. In that year, he did at least just complete level 398 in Candy Crush Saga, so at least he's better at that game than fighting in the Kumite. 
The next fight is Chong Lee versus Mouthguard Guy. Now, I got lucky with this one. Mouthguard Guy is not even listed in the credits on IMDb or the Hong Kong Movie Database. Furthermore, his name's not even there as one of the generically listed fighters during the end credits for Bloodsport. During my investigation, I did happen to run across a picture on Bolo's Facebook page. It's with him, Bolo, Frank Dukes, and Sumo Man. His name wasn't even listed in the post. However, doing an actual image search on Google, lo and behold, I found a name. Mike Genova. So going by his character in this picture, the shoes, the fact that he had mouth guard in the fight, I'd say he played a boxer. But Mike Genova himself is a karate man. He has a karate school in South Carolina. Mike Genova opened the first Genova Karate School in May of 1975. In the early years, the school's focus was on fighting and competition training. Here's some footage of him in a match here. He's quick, but the footage reminds me of Lionheart, how it breaks up. I wonder what he's hiding. Oh, enough of this. But anyway, his karate school has evolved and grown beyond its initial focus on competition training. It now includes both preschool and after school programs. Going to the website, the school's still open, which is cool. Who has a current pick of him here? His lackluster Kumite match was quite a step up from his earlier local competitions, which he dominated. Alright, so the next fight was Sumo Man Pumalo versus Blue Pajamas with Yellow Sash Man. It was quite the backbreaker. So the man who was broken was played by Henrik Westland. There was an article in 1999 from the South China Morning Post titled, Dream Life for Ex-Dream Boy. As a former Dream Boy, a made in Hong Kong troupe of male strippers, Henrik Westland always knew there was more to life than pumping iron by day and stripping by night. Well, we all certainly hope so. A boxer from Sweden, Henrik Westland apparently also had bit parts in some Jackie Chan films. However, nothing is listed on IMDb or the Hong Kong Movie Database. In that South China Morning Post article, Henrik says he was badly beaten up by stuntmen who wanted to impress directors with their fighting techniques. But the lowest point of his career was when he was hired to dress up as a Pink Panther for an RSPCA ball. He said he hated every minute of it and remembered someone asking him to take off the top of the costume, but he refused because he was so embarrassed. Today, well, at least when that article was written in 1999, he he says he can afford to laugh it off. Having started his own company distributing CDs in Europe and Asia, he is now comfortably off and happily settled with his wife. As far as the CD company goes, there were some articles in 2007 about that. According to The Guardian, a high court judge ordered his company CD Wow to pay more than 41 million pounds in compensation for illegal imports of DVDs and CDs into the UK from Asia. That didn't work out too well for him and the company was bought out later that year in 2007. He's also the owner of a French restaurant in Wan Chai called La Granuille, translated as the frog. Aside from that restaurant, he also co-owns, or at least did in 1999, four other restaurants along with a former Dream Boy colleague. Looking up that French restaurant in Wan Chai, it looks like it's closed now, so his businesses got broken much like his character did in Bloodsport, unfortunately. Do you have a job? No. You got money? No. You have any prospects? No. You have any action at all? No. You have any conceivable reason for even getting up in the morning? <laughs> All joking aside, hopefully Henrik Westland's doing alright. I just couldn't really find anything more recent on him. Oh, by the way, if any of you guys find yourself in that situation, just reassess, refocus, keep a positive outlook, a positive mind, invest in yourself, and maybe watch some Seinfeld because laughter is always good uh, while you pass the time. Next fight was Paco versus this guy that got elbowed to the face. We'll call him Grimace. Not that grimace, but rather because of his facial expression. Now, I'm not sure who this guy is. Process of elimination, he's got to be Ronnie Lee, Chu Wa, Victor Wong, or Eric New. I'm going to go with Chu Wa since that's what his grimace facial expression looks like to me, but either way, he's going in the cold case files. Up next was Chuan Ip Mong versus Brown Shorts guy that got backfisted. Backfisted Brown Shorts guy, I'm not sure who he was, so he's going to go in cold case files next to Chu Wa. He's either Max Klesecti, Colin Buckner, Paul Treadwell, Paul Finley, or Mark Chirac. Maybe we'll just chalk him down as Mark Chirac since he got rocked. Next was Frank Dukes versus Orange Schwartz guy. Frank's last day opponent on day one. This guy can at least take quite a few kicks before going down. He kind of looks like Ben Askren. Maybe that's his father. He's also the guy Jackson pushes. Yeah! My buddy! But he has to go in the cold case files as either Max Klesecti, Colin Buckner, Paul Treadwell, Paul Finley, or Mark Chirac. So, the final fight on the day one montage was Chong Lee versus Grey Gee Yellow Sash. You never even see this guy's face, and in the crowd scenes where the fighters are sitting, I couldn't find him. He'll go in the cold case files as well. He looks Asian, so narrowing it down, it's either Ronnie Lee, Chu Wa, Victor Wong, or Eric New. You think? I thought he looked Irish. So that's going to do it for part one of this video series. I'll cover the rest of the fighters that got eliminated from the Kumite on day two and day three of that competition. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.